Hey guys, what's going on? It is Dylan and I am here again with another DJI Mavic Pro tutorial video. And um, today I'm going to show you guys how to do a 360 degree interactive photo. So what I mean by interactive is, is um, if you upload this photo when it's done to Facebook, you allow users to be able to, if they're on a PC or Mac, click and drag around and see 360 degrees or if they're on a smartphone or tablet they can hold it look at the photo and turn around and you know it's interactive and it'll turn i also believe you can just pinch and swipe and all that good stuff you know your um, normal actions you do on smartphones and tablets so anyways guys um today i am using the litchi app because the litchi app is awesome i finally gave in and downloaded as i said um, in my tiny planet video if you guys haven't checked that out i'll link it at the end of this video it's super cool but anyways um I have an iPhone 7 Plus, and so I can't do um, screen recordings because Apple is, well, they're hard-headed. And they don't allow you, to my knowledge, they don't have any programs without jailbreaking your phone um, to do a screen recording. But here in the Leechy app, so anyways, enough talk. Let's launch the drone, and I will show you guys how the Leechy app can automatically take photos for you all around in 360 degrees without you having to sit there and aim the camera and tell it what to do. Okay guys, so first things first, we're gonna watch the drone. Over on the left, bottom left icon, you see a little green circle with three arrows pointing up. We'll push that and we will take off. Okay, and now we are simply piloting our drone. We're gonna get it to where um, we wanna take the 360 degree photos from. And I'm just gonna say about right there. It doesn't really matter where you have your camera angled because it's gonna do that on its own. So I'm gonna just tap to center focus real quick. And then up in the upper left corner, it says FPV. We're gonna click that, and this will show you all your different modes. You're going to click where it says Pano, the fourth one down. And then in the over to the left, you'll see a little white tablet or phone with a blue sprocket icon. Click that. And then guys, here are my settings. Um, I think you can get by on this first option with just doing four rows, but I'm gonna keep it at five because it takes more photos. If you do five rows with the rest of the settings below, it takes 42 photos. If you only do four, I believe it takes like 34 photos or something. But I j and it tells you down there at the bottom, it says start 42. So anyways, here's my settings. You guys can pause it. I'm gonna scroll slowly. You can see the settings. And again, we're doing a 360 interactive photo. Then once we get to the bottom and check all our settings, I'm going to hit start. So now that I hit start, it's automatically going to take photos from different angles. The camera tilt down and then the drone will turn, take photos, and then the drone will turn, take photos. You guys get the point, it's pretty cool. You don't have to do it. It automatically knows everywhere to go to make sure it gets all the photos that your stitching program on your Mac or PC is going to need to stitch all these together. And after this is done, um, I'll, sh I'll show you guys a screen record um, and show you guys the program I use and how I do it. So let's get started. We're going to hit start here and I'm literally going to set my controller down. Panorama ended. Okay guys, now that the panorama is ended and it's taken all the photos it needs, I'm gonna click in the upper left corner and hit pano and go back to FPV, which is my normal flight mode. And I'm simply going to land the drone. Oh, 
Okay guys, now that we have the drone landed, um, I'm going to switch to my iMac and I'm going to show you guys the program that I use and the settings and how to stitch these 42 photos together in order for you to make an interactive 360 degree photo. Okay guys, now that I am here at my iMac, and yes, I do run an, I do work on a Mac. Um, for those of you guys who are PC users, um, you may want to check. They may have this program here, Hugin. I believe I'm saying it right. I don't think it's Huggin. I think it's Hugin because you know panoramas are huge. It's a Hugin. So, anyways, um, I'm not sure if they have it for PC. You may want to do a search um, for Mac users. It's a free program. You can just search for it and um, find it. It's just Hugin Panorama Stitcher. Hope that they have it for PC, but if they don't, I'm sure there are other very similar um, panoramic panorama stitching programs. Um, the terminology and the lingo is pretty much universal. So if you watch this tutorial and you're on a PC, um, find you a program, and um, it's pretty much going to be the same basic concept. You'll kind of get it. And so all, what we're going to do today, guys, is we are doing a 360 interactive photo, and it's interactive on Facebook. I haven't tested on any other social media platforms such as Instagram or Twitter. I'll have to try it out and see what that does, but we're purely going to do this today um, with Facebook in mind. And so um, anyways, we're going to hit load images, and here are the 42 photos that the DJI Mavic Pro took um, in the Leechy app. And so I'm going to, I, I, you want to put those photos in their separate folder. So I selected all 42 of them and I hit open. Now at this point, it's going to um, just kind of do this weird little thing it does. I don't know if it's stacking them, loading them. I'm not sh entirely sure what this process is. As you can see up here, we have all 42 photos selected. You'll notice it just says 41, but for whatever reason, it names the very first file as zero, so therefore that's why it just goes to 41. There's still 42 photos. Okay, so after a little bit of time, um, I uh, what you'll want to do next is you're going to want to hit number two, align. And once you hit align, this process starts and it takes a while so I am going to go ahead and speed up and get to the next part after it's done aligning. Okay guys, and now it is done um, aligning the images. It took about five to eight minutes. Um, in real life, I obviously didn't um, let you guys suffer through that painful process of just sitting there watching it do its thing. And so um, this is basically what happens next. Um, you'll see the image, it's all stitched together. It's probably not exactly perfect. But um, it is pretty impressive how good of a job um, that Hugin does. And so anyways, at this point what we're going to do is you see these um, tabs up here. We're going to go to Move Drag. And I always just simply here, um, if you can see this line here in the middle that's not teal or blue or whatever color that is. I just kind of click there and I drag down. And then I might just keep dragging until it looks um, like it makes sense to me. And so then the next thing I do is I um, click over here, I click straighten, and that just kind of helps it straighten everything out. And then of course guys, um, I don't think it really matters. Well yeah, I guess technically it does. Um, it, what, what happens is we're gonna end up cropping this photo out and you won't see all this black and all these weird blue things. But for just looking at the photo as a 360 panorama, however you wanna see it, it's just a flattened, flat image. It is important that you put it how you want it. Um, I really don't know how I should do it. Kind of looks cool to have the river looping down. So um, I guess I'll just do that. And then at that point, I'll hit straighten again. And that kind of helps just straighten things up. Okay, so from that point, um, we're going to go over here and hit crop up here at the tabs. And I always do this HDR auto crop. And what that does is is that crops it as big as it possibly can without getting any of this little um, trashy looking area over here where it's not blue sky or any of the uh, black area up here. It's all just photo from the smart crop. So then at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to assistant and we're going to hit number three, create panorama. After we click that, this box pops up Here's your format. By default, it's usually TIFF. I always just say mine is a JPEG. Now this number up here, it's going to make it a very huge panorama in file size. So I've learned that I take it to about 3600. 
and then when you click down here um, on the quality the height is automatically adjusted to keep the image in proportion to where it won't look distorted so um, I'm gonna go ahead and change my quality to 100 why not that's as high as it goes um, and then I just leave these options like they are it usually come it'll usually output two JPEGs and I'll show you those here in a minute then we're going to click OK and then um, Hugen it wants a project file saved so like I just save it in the same folder and then this is where you're saving it as your JPEG so this is where you name your JPEG I'm just gonna name it um, Randlett Park Bridge because the little bridge is down there um, interactive you can name it whatever you want okay now we're going to hit save and then this is going to begin a process of the program rendering everything together stitching it and doing its thing to where it um you know it kind of flattens it and does what it needs to do it goes through and does all this stuff and again guys I'm not gonna let you I'm not gonna make you suffer through it so um, now that it's done creating our panorama we're going to get out of the program and we're going to open it up in Photoshop and let's open them up both and you'll see the difference see the file names down here Ranlet Park Bridge Interactive blended and fused and then just the regular one we'll open them both up in Photoshop now let's just do a fit on screen and a fit on screen here is the blended and fused one just kind of take a look at it doesn't look bad and here is the regular one I like the regular one better look right here we're back on the blended and fused one see the car how it's kind of ghosted in now look on, at the same spot keep keep your eye right there on the car and look it just looks better for whatever reason so this one looks sharper so I'm gonna say goodbye to you and there's our image pretty high res not good stuff what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it uh, more web friendly more web ready for the you know make it a little bit smaller uh, so it'll load a little bit better on the on the net and all that good stuff so um, you know as you saw I took the Rezo 300 and I made it about an eighth width and it automatically uh, made it about 2.807 on the height to keep it in proportion and not be distorted we're gonna click OK and there's our panorama I'm going to just do a auto tone and auto contrast and then we're going to save it let's save it on the desktop and let Park Bridge Interactive save okay now let's take this thing to Facebook and let me show you guys what I'm talking about um, as far as the uh, as how it's interactive so I'm going to go here and um, we're going to do let's see let me go back to my actual page my actual media page not my personal page let's do a search and there it is okay and then I'm going to click to add a photo and then there on our desktop 360 oh Randlett Park Bridge Interactive and notice guys I didn't do anything to this photo as far as like going into any properties or telling it that it was a 360 photo Facebook's just smart and it realizes that it is one I can tell because as the little globe right here um, instead of just a regular camera so it's already recognizing it that it's a big huge pano photo that it must be 360 and so I'm just gonna put a little description up here Randlett Park Anadarko Oklahoma February 2017 and um, edit 360 settings let's click on that real quick let's see what that does okay so this is our starting view this is like oh man look it didn't do a perfect job of stitching that bridge so this program isn't perfect but if I'd have caught that in Photoshop I could have went in and did some work on it and made it look better but for the most part as you guys can see it is pretty pretty cool but anyways so let's um what do we what looks most interesting for our starting view um, definitely not the broken in half a bridge let's just go with something about like that because we've got the water tower it's kind of interesting and the body of water so save and as you'll see it saves right there we'll click publish and then hey what do you know check it out we have a 360 degree for the most part it's not quite 360 because it doesn't go it doesn't shoot up obviously because the 
drones above your camera on your drone but as you can see guys we're clicking around and moving and it's pretty much 360 degrees for the most part so pretty impressive software pretty powerful software not too hard at all once you if you have the right software it's not too bad but anyways guys that is a 360 degree interactive photo um, using the DJI Mavic Pro again like I stated um, I'm pretty sure you can use any of the DJI drones including the Phantoms and the Inspire as long as you're using that Litchi app um, I'm pretty sure that it'll do the same thing and um, if you guys would subscribe on YouTube I'd sure appreciate it and um, go ahead and like this video if you don't mind um, and uh, check me out check out my uh, media page on um, Facebook just um, facebook.com slash Dylan Young official and um, this is where I put a bunch of like my media stuff and videos and all that good stuff on it so anyways guys I really appreciate you guys taking the uh, time to check out this video hopefully you soon will be making 360 interactive photos I appreciate it. This is Dylan. Everyone have a great day.